Hi, Assalamualaikum. Welcome back to the channel Physics 15 SSM. Today we continue 4.2 Electromagnetic Induction Part 1. In this video, I will discuss two learning standards. The first one describes electromagnetic induction in straight wire and solenoid. And then I will discuss on uh, explain factors that affect magnitude of induced EMF. Refer to your textbook activity 4.10. The aim of this activity is to study electromagnetic induction in a straight wire and solenoid. Apparatus required a pair of magnetomagnets, copper rod and sensitive center zero galvanometer or digital multimeter. Material connecting wires with crocodile clips. So for the first part, we will discuss on a straight wire. You look at how we arrange the straight wire. So this is copper rod. Using connecting wire, connect to a galvanometer. And this one is magnetomagnet. What happens when the wire is moved in this direction? Upwards, A. Downward, B. Left, C. Or right, D. Observe what happens to the galvanometer reading. Okay, watch this video in order to understand what happens to the copper rod. First, wire is moved down. So you can see deflection of pointer is to the right. Now, wire is moved upwards. You can see the pointer pointing to left. What happens when moved parallel to the magnetic field, either C or D direction? You can see the reading of galvanometer equals to zero, showing there is no current flow. Or wire is held stationary in magnetic field, also there's no reading, showing that no current is flowing in the copper rod. So from here, what we can say is, in order to produce induced current or induced EMF, there must be relative motion between the copper rod and the magnet. Let's discuss some questions. What causes deflection of galvanometer pointer? You must know the function of galvanometer is to detect current. Deflection showing that galvanometer pointer detects current. State direction of magnetic field between poles of magnet. I think you have studied earlier in science. Direction is always from north to south pole. The magnetic field between the poles of magnet are parallel lines directed from north to south pole. What are direction of motion of copper rod that causes the cutting of magnetic field lines? Upwards and downwards. As you observed in the video just now, when the wire or copper rod is moved upwards and downwards, then only we can see the pointer of galvanometer deflect. For direction which is parallel to magnetic field lines, there's no deflection of galvanometer. Explain condition where a current is produced in the copper rod. A current is produced in copper rod when there is relative motion that causes the cutting of magnetic flux. So you can see when the rod is moved upwards and downwards, there is a cutting of magnetic flux. When moved parallel with the magnetic field lines, there's no cutting of magnetic flux, there's no current flow. Let's look at solenoid. In this experiment, we need bar magnet, solenoid, at least 400 turns, sensitive center zero galvanometer or digital multimeter. Material connecting wires with crocodile clips. So you can see this is the setup. This is solenoid, connect to galvanometer, and this is bar magnet. So what we do, we just move the bar magnet towards and away from the solenoid. Observe what happens to the reading of galvanometer. Watch this video. Magnet is moved into solenoid. You can see the pointer deflect to the right. Move away, the pointer deflect to left. Now 
Now solenoid move towards stationary magnet, it deflects to right. Or the solenoid it moves move away from the stationary magnet initially inside solenoid, deflect to left. What happens if magnet is stationary in solenoid? No reading or zero reading, meaning no current is produced. So from this activity, we can see that there must be relative motion in order to produce induced EMF or induced current. Let's discuss some questions. What do you observe about deflection of galvanometer pointer when the bar magnet is moved towards the solenoid? Deflection of galvanometer pointer is to the left. The bar magnet is moved away from the solenoid. Deflection of galvanometer pointer is to the right. State the condition where a current is produced in the solenoid. A current is produced in the solenoid when the turns of the solenoid cuts the magnetic flux. In order to produce the cutting of the magnetic flux, there must be a relative motion. Okay, let's explain further on that situation. In the first diagram here, you can see this is a magnetic magnet. This is a copper rod and connect to the galvanometer. When a piece of copper wire is moved across magnetic flux, an electromotive force is induced in the wire. This phenomenon is known as electromagnetic induction. If the wire is connected to form a complete circuit, a deflection of galvanometer pointer observed. This shows that induced current is produced. An electromotive force is also induced in the wire if the magnet is moved towards the stationary wire. So what we need is there must be relative motion. So we can, we can create situation where the rod move the magnet stationary or the wire at rest the magnet is moving. So there must be relative motion in order to produce the cutting off or the change in magnetic flux in order to produce induced current. Same thing eh? below here, the magnet move, okay, and then it's just like a situation where the wire move downwards. Okay, if the first part here, the wire move upwards, deflection is left. Now magnet move upwards, same situation as wire move downwards. So that's why deflection is in opposite direction here, right direction. Thus, we can define electromagnetic induction is the production of an induced EMF in a conductor when there is relative motion between the conductor and magnetic field or when conductor is in a changing in magnetic field. So you must be able to explain eh, what is meant by electromagnetic induction. Let's look at this situation where we have a solenoid and a bar magnet. For the bar magnet, there are magnetic flux that are directed from north to south. So if you look at the first diagram here, the solenoid does not connect it to any external circuit. The circuit is not complete. Thus, when a bar magnet is moved towards or away from the solenoid, the turns of the solenoid cut the magnetic field lines. What happens is, electromagnetic induction occurs and EMF is induced across the solenoid. There will be induced EMF across the solenoid. Next, if the solenoid is connected to galvanometer, now the circuit is complete. So what happens now? The current will flow in the circuit. Thus, galvanometer will deflect, showing that induced current is flowing in the circuit. The induced electromotive force will produce an induced current in the circuit, 
and the galvanometer pointer shows a deflection. Let's look at some factors that affect magnitude of induced EMF. An induction lamp made by a pupil, he found that the LED lights up with different brightness when the magnet in the PVC pipe is shaken at different speeds. What are the factors that affect magnitude of induced EMF? Look at this one. By shaking, you can see the magnet in the PVC pipe will pass through the coil of copper wire, thus produce the cutting of magnetic flux. So this one will produce induced EMF across the copper wire, thus current flow through the LED. You can see LED lights up. If shaken with different speed, for example, maybe you shake it slower, the LED light up dimmer. When you shaking, shake it up, when you shake it faster, it will produce brighter light at the LED. So how to explain this? If you look at this, if you look at this induction lamp, it applies an uh, electromagnetic induction concept. When the magnet is shaken, the copper wire cuts magnetic flux and produces change in magnetic flux, induce current flow and light up the LED. So from this principle, you can make your own uh, torchlight, for example, using this concept. Another one, this is a cut. You can see at the cut, there is a max strip or magnetic stripe which has varying magnetic field orientation along the length of the cut is swiped through a cut reader. A change in magnetic flux is produced in one direction. Thus, the cut reader can read the identity of the cut. Look at activity 4.11. Now we want to discuss on factors affecting magnitude of induced EMF. Apparatus 2 solenoid with 400 and 800 turns respectively, 2 bar magnets and sensitive center zero galvanometer, material connecting wires and rubber band. Let's say for the first part, use one magnet, move at slow speed, number of turns of solenoid is 400. Okay. Look at the maximum reading of galvanometer. For the first attempt, let's say we get 10. Second attempt is 8, thus the average is 9. Then, increase the speed of magnet. The first attempt is 16. Second attempt is 18, so the average here is 17. Okay, let's repeat the same step by using one magnet. The speed is slow, but more number of turns, 800. So the first attempt is 17, second attempt 17, average 17. Next, increase the number of magnets for the same number of turns using two magnets. Okay, speed is slow, number of turns still 800. For the first attempt, 34, second attempt, 32, thus average 33. Thus, from the reading here, what we can say about the magnitude of induced current flow, you can see for the first part, by increasing the speed, you can see the reading of galvanometer increases. The second part, increasing the strength of magnet, the reading of the galvanometer also increases. Use same number of magnet. Move slow and then increase the number of turns, 400 to 800. So you can see the reading also increase. So from here, we can see there are three factors that affect magnitude of induced current that flow in the galvanometer. Okay, let's discuss some questions. Why does a galvanometer pointer deflect when a magnet is pushed into the solenoid? Because there is a cutting of magnetic flux when the bar magnet moves into the solenoid. Or we can say the solenoid cuts the magnetic flux of the bar magnet. 
which factor is studied when bomb magnet is pushed at different speeds into the solenoid? Rate of cutting of magnetic flux. Because the speed is related to how many lines are being cut per second or we call it rate of cutting of magnetic flux. Which factor is studied when number of magnet push into the solenoid is different? Number of field lines being cut by solenoid that's related to strength of magnetic field. How is magnitude of induced EMF factored by speed, number of turns and strength of magnetic field? The magnitude of induced EMF increases when the speed of magnet increases. The magnitude of induced EMF increases when number of turns of solenoid increases. The magnitude of induced EMF increases when the strength of magnetic field increases. So from here we can see there are three factors that affect magnitude of induced EMF or current. Speed of magnet, number of turns of solenoid, strength of magnetic field. Okay, there are three factors just now. Eh? Okay, let's look at this one. For the relative motion of a straight wire and magnet, the induced EMF increases when the speed of relative motion increases and the strength of magnetic field increases. For relative motion of the solenoid and magnet, the induced EMF increases. When the speed of relative motion increases, the number of turns increases and the strength of magnetic field increases. So it depends on the situation that discuss either it is a straight wire or solenoid. So from here, the magnitude of induced EMF actually discussed by Faraday's law. What is stated by Faraday's law? Faraday's law states that the magnitude of induced EMF is directly proportional to the rate of cutting of magnetic flux or the rate of change of magnetic flux. So that's all my video today. I will continue 4.2 Electromagnetic Induction Part 2 in my next video. Thank you for watching. Bye.